live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists, this is Tracking the Tropics. Tropical storm Cristobal a little stronger as it continues northward across the Gulf of Mexico. Good afternoon, good morning everyone, depending where you are joining us from across the next star nation. I'm Daisy Ruth. I'm joined here by Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Amanda Holly. And Amanda, this has been a very interesting storm. I want to get right to you. I know this is what everybody that is watching wants, wants to really know. Can you give us the latest about the storm? Yeah, so we just got the latest in from the National Hurricane Center on Tropical Storm Cristobal. And like you said, Daisy, it is slightly stronger as it's making its way north through the Gulf of Mexico. We now have maximum sustained winds at 50 miles per hour. Still a tropical storm here, and it's moving north at about 12 miles per hour. So making good forward progress. But looking at the satellite presentation of this storm, it doesn't look like your typical hurricane. It's not very symmetric is what I'm getting at. And this is the center in this region right here. And if you notice, there's a lot of dry air on this side of the storm. So that's really what's preventing it from getting too strong too fast. And a lot of that convection, as we all know here in Florida, is well on the eastern side of this storm. So that's what all of these colors here. These are clouds that we're looking at and some very cold cloud tops because we have some very tall thunderstorms embedded within that. Again, well outside the eastern, or excuse me, the center portion of this storm. So I'm going to show you the track, but just because the center may make landfall somewhere along the eastern Louisiana coastline doesn't mean that you won't be feeling impacts elsewhere because impacts are going to be far reaching from this storm. As it approaches the Louisiana coastline timeline here looks to be sometime tomorrow evening. Keep in mind though the tropical storm force winds if you are located along the central Gulf Co Coast here, excuse me, they are going to be starting a little bit earlier. So we're probably going to start to see those tropical storm force winds. That's that's 39 miles per hour or above um, starting sometime early Saturday or excuse me, Sunday afternoon here. And then that storm is going to make its way ashore. It's going to continue to move north, weakening in terms of its wind speeds. But it's going to bring a lot of moisture as it continues to make its way north through uh, portions of the Mississippi River Valley, really, and continuing on up to the north again, weakening in wind speeds, but bringing a lot of moisture off to the north. So that's the very latest track. It was updated, if you will, as of the 11 a.m. advisory, but not much has changed. We actually have been pretty consistent with Tropical Storm Cristobal here. We haven't had a whole lot of surprises with this storm, uh, and that's been good news. It's going right as scheduled. It was sitting in the Bay of Campeche. It sat over Mexico for several days, did that little loop, and then now it's moving north through the Gulf of Mexico. Check out the spaghetti models here. You can see the tight cluster. There aren't really many outliers at all. That gives us good confidence that this is where that storm is going to uh, kind of approach and make landfall sometime tomorrow afternoon again in the eastern portion of the coastline of Louisiana. There's New Orleans right there. There's Baton Rouge and Mobile. So uh, if you're on the eastern side of where this center comes ashore, you're going to be feeling impacts, whether it's in the form of rain or wind or just some general thunderstorms um, on the eastern side. But Again, good consensus as that storm kind of continues to make its way off to the north. All right, here's a look at water vapor. And again, this is important because as I showed you earlier, uh, we're seeing a lot of dry air being make, making its way into the center portion of the storm, really trying to get in there, and that's preventing it from getting too strong. I know a lot of people probably asking the question, is there any chance that this becomes a hurricane mm -hmm. or a really strong hurricane? Well, here's one of the reasons why it will not do that this time around, is we've got a lot of dry air and tropical Tropical cyclones, they don't like dry air. They like a lot of the deep tropical moisture. That's what helps to fuel them. So this dry air right here being entrained into the center, that's what's preventing it from strengthening at this point. We've also got some uh, wind shear affecting the storm. That's what's pushing a lot of the moisture on the eastern side. This is satellite and radar. I've been tracking this rain all morning long in Florida here, and you can see there are some heavy downpours embedded within this, even though the center of Cristobal is well out in the Gulf of Mexico. But you can already see so some of these outer northern rain bands, if you will, starting to make their way along the coast. So, you know, those tropical storm force winds starting early tomorrow afternoon. Landfall not expected till tomorrow evening, but rain is already accumulating in portions of the Gulf Coast. And this is what we're looking at 
over the next five days or so. Moisture continuing to entrain here. We're looking at the possibility of flooding as this storm continues to bring moisture. And it is going to take a lot of that moisture up with it as it makes its way to the north. So we're talking about Gulf Coast impacts here, but we're also talking about, uh, you know, flooding rains and the possibility for flash flooding along the Mississippi River Valley and up through the Midwest as the moisture kind of makes its way up there. It won't be a tropical system per se any longer up north, but still going to be doing the same thing. Breezy winds and dumping a lot of rain as well. I do want to go back here to that flood watch map for you because that is important. I think this is going to be one of the biggest impacts from this storm is the flood watch potential or the flood potential, the flash flooding potential. Those green colors that you see there, that's a flood watch. We've got flood warnings in effect for the Mississippi River. That was those flashing green boxes because we've already seen a lot of rain from this system and it's not even close to shore just yet. Tropical storm watches in effect and warnings in effect because we're getting closer to the, that event. So not, no surprise there. They did allow the storm surge watch to expire along the Big Bend region of Florida, but we still have a storm surge watch in effect for eastern portions of New Orleans. And again, that's that water that's going to be being pushed into the coast because of those winds, something to watch out for. And again, as we go into the next couple of days, next 48 hours, really, the rain is going to continue to fall in portions of Florida, and it's going to start to really make its way. And these rain bands are going to be really wrapping around uh, as we make our way into the Gulf Coast region, the central Gulf Coast. So we're talking about coastal impacts, especially in the form of rip currents, high rough seas out there, um, and, and the possibility for that weak storm surge as well. We're not talking about a lot of storm surge because the storm isn't very strong. But we are talking about a lot of rain, especially to the east of where that center comes ashore. That's a big deal, especially if you have flash flooding problems in your area. Talked about this a little bit here. The arrival time of those tropical storm force winds, it looks like early Sunday morning along the eastern uh, Gulf Coast of the Louisiana coastline there, Mississippi, and even portions of the Florida Panhandle. So keep that in mind. Early tomorrow morning, this time tomorrow morning, you'll likely be experiencing those tropical storm force gusts. So Daisy, just going over here for those of you who are just joining us, we got the latest in on tropical storm Cristobal, still expected to make landfall sometime tomorrow afternoon. It has strengthened just a little bit here. Year, maximum sustained winds at about 50 miles per hour. The hurricane hunters have been flying in and they found those sustained winds earlier this morning. And that movement continues to be north at 12 miles per hour. And the very latest track for you is in, but it hasn't changed very much. Again, this storm proceeding as planned. No surprises with this one. Likely making landfall as a stronger tropical storm sometime tomorrow evening with about 60 mile per hour winds. That's the current forecast. That's the latest da data, Daisy. And, uh, you know, I'm sure questions are pouring in right now from our Facebook fans. If you want to go ahead and read some of those comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Yes, Amanda, we've been having a lot of comments, a lot of concern for New Orleans in the comments right now. We we are here in Florida, your hurricane headquarters in Tampa, Florida, but we have, have folks checking in from Kentucky and a lot of concern for New Orleans. So can you Talk a little bit if, if you know about the impacts that they might see there. Obviously, that's that's been an area that's been very heavily impacted by hurricanes before and just a lot of concern coming in for our friends there. Yeah, sure. You know, anytime we have a landfalling tropical system, it is of concern, especially in an area like New Orleans, um, you know, who have experienced some strong, stronger systems. Obviously, they experienced Katrina uh, multiple years ago, but this system is not a, a Katrina by any means. We're talking about a stronger tropical storm with wind speeds of 60 miles per hour. So don't get me wrong. That's some strong winds. That's what we classify a severe thunderstorm as, but it's not going to be a very strong hurricane. So that means is what I just said here for New Orleans. If you're worried about the water, the storm surge coming in, this system isn't that strong. So we're not going to see that much push of the water into the city of New Orleans. Will there be some? Yes, likely because we're seeing these winds come in. The counterclockwise flow of those winds will be pushing water into uh, that New Orleans area along the eastern coastline of Louisiana. But again, maybe two to four feet at this point is what we're looking at. So, um, you know, rain, obviously another concern. I think rain and maybe a little bit of storm surge at those highest tides tomorrow and tomorrow night are going to be of concern for New Orleans. But not expecting this to be a big, big major impact system. Take your precautions. Uh, you know, you should be finishing up those hurricane plans. They should have been into place, but you should be finishing up those today. Uh, again, those rain bands starting to move in. 
And Amanda, we're seeing a lot of comments right now from here in Florida about the rain. It is a very soggy, wet day. What can Floridians continue to expect over the next couple of days? I'm so glad our WFLA fans asked me about that because I have been tracking this rain <laughs> for quite some time this morning. As soon as I got in, there was a thunderstorm sitting off the coast of Port Charlotte there, um, and it had a little bit of rotation, and I've been tracking heavy rain sitting along the coastline of Florida uh, for multiple hours now since I got in early, early this morning, and it hasn't stopped. So this is Max Defender 8. This is a radar product that we have here in Tampa Bay, and uh, it's really, it does a really great job at tracking these storms. But this is a live sweep. This is what we're experiencing right now in West Central Florida. And all of this rain extends into North Florida. It extends into the Panhandle as well, so toward the Big Bend. But all of the reds, that's very heavy rain. I actually just got some reports in before we started this Facebook Live and for our uh, other companies or other stations that are tra taking us as well. Just before we started this stream, um, I got some reports of funnel clouds that are in this cell right here in central Manatee and headed north toward central Hillsborough County. So uh, no reports of tornadoes, but we do have reports of funnel clouds, and that's because we're on that side of the storm for the potential for a little bit of rotation. So putting this in motion for you, you can see this line of heavy, heavy rain here. That's what we're going to be experiencing for the rest of the day. Now, will I, will we see some dry time, some periods of dry weather? Yes, I do believe so, because this right here is the back edge of some of this heavy rain and it's going to continue to lift north. I think we're going to get a little bit of a break from the rain early this afternoon before it kind of makes its way back in. This rain though continuing, that's why we have that flood watch in effect through tomorrow evening. Uh, we have a couple of flood warnings in effect as well. So not the greatest weekend here in the Sunshine <laughs> State, unfortunately, but uh, you know that flash flooding definitely a possibility. Those lo that localized flooding, uh, you know, we've seen places pick up an inch and a half easy so far since midnight, and that's we've we've seen rain since Wednesday. So definitely a lot of rain coming in. Looks to be a soggy washout of a weekend. And again, everybody, we are joining you here from Hurricane Headquarters in Tampa, Florida, coming to you across the nation, the next our nation, not just here in Florida, but across the country. Amanda, do you have any other thoughts that we should be aware of before we potentially, if anything breaks, we will be back live here on Tracking the Tropics. But any final thoughts about Tropical Storm Cristobal as of right now, where the National Hurricane Center data stands right now? Yeah, sure. You know, there hasn't been a whole lot of changes with this storm. I just want to reiterate that that this storm has, uh, you know, proceeded as planned. We haven't had any surprises, and I expect that to continue as we head toward landfall sometime tomorrow afternoon. Um, I, I want to reiterate, too, we're not expecting a very strong storm. I don't think we're going to see very rapid intensification. That's probably the first time we've used that term <laughs> this hurricane season. Uh, we're not expecting that with this system because of those things that I mentioned, the factors, the dry air being pulled into the center here. It's a very lopsided storm. It's being affected by some wind shear. Um, so the conditions just aren't right for a very strong storm with this one. It's going to be a rainmaker. We're going to see flooding. We already saw a lot of flooding and unfortunately fatalities down in Mexico with this system. Uh, but I don't think that, you know, we're going to see that much rain. They saw 30 plus inches down in Mexico. Could wow. we see, you know, isolated areas of up to 10 inches and maybe a foot? Yes, but the good news is it's going to continue to, to move away. It's not going to stall out over one area. You know, just if you're in the central Gulf Coast area, if you're in Florida, you don't really need that hurricane plan into place, really. But pay attention to the weather. Uh, if you're in the central Gulf Coast, I would say, you know, bring those preparations to completion today. And then as we go into our Sunday, we'll continue to update you. We'll have another Tracking the Tropics coming live for you tomorrow morning to give you an update on some of those conditions that will be occurring at that time. Remember, this time tomorrow morning, we could be seeing those tropical storm force winds. Amanda, thank you so much for all that you do, keeping us safe here in Florida, tracking these storms in Florida, and for our friends across the nation. And again, as, as you said, we are going to have another Tracking the Tropics live for you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Unless something, something breaks, something develops, then we will hop on here on Tracking the Tropics. But right now for Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Amanda Holly, I'm Daisy Ruth. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe.